So now that we've talked about the key terms, diploid and haploid, and the chromosomes, we're ready to talk about the variety of life cycles that various types of organisms utilize. There's three main types, and look to their names to provide a hint as to how the organism spends the majority of its life cycle. Haploidic organisms spend most of their life as a haploid cell. After fertilization, a diploid sporophyte forms. This gives rise to many spores that live individually or as a multicellular organism. They form by meiosis to half the number of chromosomes, to haploid. These adults can form gametes by mitosis, since they are already haploid, and then the cycle can begin again by fertilization. This is the way many protists and fungi live out their life cycles. Alternation of generations does just that. It alternates between a diploid adult, which is the sporophyte, which uses meiosis to produce spores, and a haploid adult called a gametophyte, which uses mitosis to produce gametes. Those gametes fuse to make another diploid sporophyte and the process continues. Ferns are an example of a type of organism that uses this process. And finally, the diplonic life cycle, which is the cycle of humans and other animals and many of the seed-bearing plants. Only the gametes produced by meiosis are haploid. After fertilization, a zygote forms and develops into an adult, mature, diploid form, and that's all done through mitosis. Since all animals are diploid, they should have an even number of chromosomes because you have to multiply by two. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. Diploid adults form gametes through meiosis, like I talked about in the previous screencast, which continues the life cycle. Those are the three major types. Again, make sure to know diplonic before anything else because that is the life cycle of humans.